Good morning and welcome to Working Horse with Jim. As we had suggested in an earlier video, maybe we'd bring you guys to a coffee break. So that's what we're doing. We're having coffee today and Brenda made a pie. I think she says it's an apple... Strawberry, strawberry pie. pie. Cleaning out my freezer. Okay. So that's what we're going to have this morning while we answer some questions. So if you want to pass that pie out. Abby is here with us today, our daughter Abby, and she is going to help us here a little bit. She's going to, she's going to ask us the questions, and uh, we'll uh, we'll eat pie and and talk. How's that, guys? I may spend more time eating than than talking, um, just because I like pie. Yeah, you want people just to watch you eat. Well, I'm not going to stop because I want a piece of pie. This is kind of soupy. Do you want some, Abs? Yeah. It sure doesn't stay together like a pie, but it sure does taste good. Good. As long as it tastes good. Okay, Abs. Let's get this show on the road. Okay. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. I'm from Sydney, Australia. Wow. Have you ever hitched the horses two in front and two behind as a four horse hitch? That's a good question. I have not done that for quite some time, um, but years ago I used to do it quite a lot. And I actually even have a couple pictures here of uh, myself plowing back when I was still in Vermont with four horses. Um, I brought that same plow up here when I moved to New York and I plowed a lot with four horses up here also. But um, these are both pictures, I believe, if I remember right, I just purchased that plow it was very late in the season. I think it was in December, and I was doing fall plowing with them, and uh, it worked pretty good. I I enjoyed it. I it's a it's a bit of a challenge nowadays. I just soon use just three. That's really all I feel I need um, for plowing most of the time. But it is fun to use a bigger hitch once in a while. Brenda, I love your greenhouse. Wonderful Thank you. construction and design. Yeah. Thank you. It looks like it keeps the rain, wind, and snow out as well. You guys may have answered this, but how many acres do you farm, and how many head of cattle do you typically have? Um, right around 450 acres. Some of it's a big wood lot. I don't know. Do you know how many are... They said how many do you farm? Um, it's hard to say because we rent a little bit, but we're... We must be farming approximately, I don't know, 150 acres more or less of farm ground that we're doing hay and crops with. And then we have a big woodlot up the road too, so. Cows, we have five cows. We've just cut, cut way back, Jim. Decide, oh, six? No, oh, it was five. And eight young stock that are, um, you know, like, Last years or the year, last any year. years, just this last year's um, young stock. So, 14. And so we have uh, six that are due to have calves here in the next month or so. And I did, like she said, I cut back quite a lot. I had 11 calves born here last year and I just didn't want to deal with that many. So we, we cut back to, to six. So. Do you ever cut lumber in full nominal dimensions? I know dimensional lumber is standard these days, but do your customers ever want full dimensions like two by fours? Actually, we cut basically everything in full two inch instead of what the store bought is. Once in a while, somebody will ask for that and we can saw that, but, but generally it's all cut full length, full width, I mean, thickness, yes. Is normal like when, like from the store, is it normally cut two by four, but then it just gets smaller? Yes, so by the time it's dried and planed down, it's inch and a half by three and a half. Right. Okay, how long have you and Jim been married? How old are your kids? Well, that's nice. Okay. What do you say that's nice? She said that I'm an amazing young lady. Oh. <laughs> just skip that amazing part out. It's just a typo probably anyways. <laughs> Um, okay. I don't know how long we've been married. I gotta look at the calendar. I don't know what year you were married. 36 years. 
Is it? I don't know. <laughs> 39. Oh my goodness. 36. Wow. I deserve metal. You did for what? Not knowing how many years you're married, I'm just forgetting I, I the other part oh, okay. of what you're trying to so far. to um Anyways, get across. That's the answer. 39. Wow. And our children are. Do you care if we say? No. Do you know? 29. <laughs> Abby's 29 and holding, right? Mm -hmm. Trudy's 30. Two, one. She's 31. And Levi is going to be, well, he's 34. He's going to be 34, I think. I don't think that those are right. Okay. You don't know how old Trudy is? No, I would have said. She was born in 91. I would, either 31 or 32, but I would have said 32. She is 32, because she's going to be 33 and this Levi's year. Levi's already 35, I'm pretty sure. What? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Jill is. That means you're getting old. He, well, Levi's he was born, born in 89. In... He's going to have a birthday. So, so the answer to this 35. question is no, we don't yeah, know how 35. old our children are. He is already 35. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. We don't know how long we've been married. We don't know how old our kids are. I do know how old my grandkids are, though. <laughs> we see. We see what's important. I don't know how old they are either. Next question, please. Okay, this is from Henry D. Young. Um, I have a question. How do your how do you teach your horses to pull even? A few months ago, Baron put in her email that you were teaching. <laughs> Baron, Baron, is it Baron? Emails? No. Um, no, Brenda put in her email that you were teaching Baron. I think to start quicker or at least some. Or at least start at the same time as the horses next to him. I couldn't notice it in the videos, but maybe I'm missing something. And if you could answer that question of not only how to get them to pull even, but also how to start them at the same time. To start with, hi Henry. I know you've been with us for a long time. Appreciate that. Um, I think that might be a question that I could just have a whole video on, or partial video. So I'm just gonna hold off on that question and I'll try to get into a video sometime in the semi near future. In semi near, I'll try to get into a video in the semi near future. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dad, what is your opinion on working mules? Um, I really don't have an opinion on it. I have drove a couple teams of mules before, but I've never owned any. So I, I really couldn't say. Um, I. As of right now, I prefer horses over mules because ignorance, I guess, I don't know anything enough about mules to even compare them. So that's about where I'm at. I have always thought you would love mules because like... No, you've always thought you would love mules. No, but yes, I would because I think they're cute. But you, I think they take the heat good. Like when you want to do a lot of haying and stuff, I think they would be really good for you. My horses take the heat very well too. They so do. Heat's really they not do, issue. but... Anyways. Mules are cute. Horses are beautiful. Well, that would offend some mule people. I know. I'm sorry. I better not say that. <laughs> Next question. What are donkeys? Super cute. <laughs> Next question. You're having another piece? No, I'm just having... Leave that stuff. The insides. No, you can. Okay, go ahead. What's the next question? Okay, Jim and Brent. Brent and Jim. My question, if you could is have you ever tried loading the logs on the wagon with the horses instead of equipment i'm sure you'll be familiar with the process but i never saw you try it so far any thoughts on this process in general how would you even do that years ago when i first started logging i would use a sled and i would roll logs onto the sled by hand a lot once in a while i'd use a horse to with a chain underneath it and roll the log on I hardly ever do that, um, especially now and with the machinery that I have to go with my logging. I don't need to, and of course the machinery works so much better and easier. There are several people on YouTube even that do do that, and I would suggest go check them out because, um, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty neat the way it's done, especially it if you have some really 
especially if it's really quiet, easy going horses to do the job. Do you know any of the people on YouTube? I mean, Zach Oldham is one. And there's another guy from down south, but I, I don't know his channel, so I couldn't tell you. But I'm sure there's others too. Well, you can see mules and that was Zach Oldham. Yes. When? When? <laughs> How do you deal with dirt getting into chainsaw chains dulling? That's a pretty simple answer. Don't. A file. Oh. <laughs> okay. Next question. Are you going to roach the suffix mains? First of all, what is roaching mean? Clipping them. I she know. knows. <laughs> oh. Um, I do love the look of, of them and having their manes long. Though I must admit that some horses in a hitch with long manes and some with roach manes does not look very harmonic. I've also heard from other draft horse channels that a roach mane is better for spotting potential injuries related to harnesses, collar, and bridle. Is that your experience too? I would say yes, it's, it's not hidden up. Um, another big thing why I'd be tempted to clip the manes is when I come home from the work from logging all day with Baron, and I pull his collar off, the hair is that's underneath, had, has been underneath the collar all day long, is all matted up. And I just cannot believe there's any way that it would be as comfortable for the horse with all that hair there as it would be if it was roached. And uh, another thing, if it's good enough for Uncle Sam, I think it's good enough for me. What's the first thing you do when you go into the army? You get your hair buzzed right off. So there's my answer. Next question. I wonder where that was going. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think Uncle Sam has a lot of hair. At least a big beard. Uncle Sam does, but the <laughs> when you go into the army, they don't. I, don't know um, if I did want to say also that Baron always has, he sweats more under that, you know. And It, it um, does look pretty beautiful though. It's hard to know what to is. do. How do you? <laughs> Oh, right, that doesn't care about that. Yes, he does. Oh, Otherwise, does. he would have already done it. Baron, yes, do you remember? Cut their hair. Do you remember? I know, but do you remember two years ago how ragged his mane was? Yeah, yeah. And look at it now; it's, it's really beautiful. Nice. And um, Earl doesn't have near the mane. Duke's is better, but Earl's is just eh. so it's gonna be no big deal. But for mm. Baron, it's beautiful, so it's gonna be hard to know what to do. So the real answer is to, to be. To, to, to be determined. To be, to be determined, yes. And um, I guess my question is, seems like a pretty obvious question. You don't question. get to ask questions. Have you considered the man bun? <laughs> All the way across, like multiple man buns. Absolutely not. <laughs> you could have... Um, Duke and Earl had man buns when they were young. Yeah. You could have Erica come and just spray it all and leave it like that for the whole season. Don't want to do that either. Well, sorry, Erica. But you do do a great job. Okay. And if you haven't watched that video, you should check it out. Um, do you guys do any composting? Yes. Kinda? Yes, I do. Um, probably not as much. Since we have so much raw material on our farm, um, old silage and manure and hay, old hay and stuff like that, I don't as much, but I do come all of our scraps from our house and stuff. I compost it and put it back on. Um, but I do know it's very valuable and should be done. But you also give a lot to the pigs too. Yeah, nice. I give stuff to the pigs and the chickens and whatnot, but still the coffee grounds and all that, we compost them. Are you coming to the end of the, of the questions? Yes. Good, because the coffee break's almost over. Gotta get back to work. Do the horses respond a bit differently when William, Brenda, or someone else has them besides Jim? Absolutely. Yes. Oh, I would say absolutely yes. They don't mind. <laughs> no, not as good. They know that. They do. They can tell. It's amazing how they can tell. You know. Well, they know. They hesitate a lot before they go. And yeah, you like, like say so like step. It's, it's not that they don't like, do fine. No, they do fine. It's just that different. Yes. Maybe they're just waiting for you, and they're like, wait. It's not, it's mm. not him. Yeah. Um, a couple of years ago in a video, you said that Baron isn't growing as fast as you expect. Read it. A couple of years ago in a video, you said that Baron wasn't going uh, growing as fast as you had expected, and you weren't sure he would get as big 
he would get big enough to do the work that you needed him to do. Do you still feel that way? Uh, no, I do not feel that way. He is up to over 1,600 pounds. Um, I have been very pleased with how he's pulling in the woods with Bill. I am looking forward to going to some horse pulls this summer. Time still will tell as to what my real thoughts on how well he does. But no, I, he is, he's definitely big enough to do the job. And I think he'll even, you know, get beefier as he gets older and uh, hopefully even put more weight on. So yeah, I've been very pleased with him. And just one little tidbit here on that. We do still have some semen left from uh, when we did that. And so if any of you guys out there have mares that uh, would like to get bred to Baron, um, that's still a possibility. So. Um, I've got one other question. Um, someone had asked, and we couldn't find the comment, but they had asked um, what, at the horse poles, how much do you, how much have they horses pulled? And uh, here is a picture of myself back in, it must have been in 1980. Um, it, was a, it was a long time ago before, while we were still in Vermont. And I had a pair of stallions that I was pulling together. And I worked those two stallions for years. It was the Andy and Rowdy. And I remember we were at Springfield, Vermont. And it, they didn't have a lot of horse pulls there, but they had one there that year. And it was kind of a wet, rainy day, which makes all the differences as to how much weight you can pull. Um, but if I recall, this load right here was at 16,000 pounds. And I believe we crossed it. I'm not sure. It, may, it might have been the load we couldn't cross. But anyways, it was a quite a load of, log, uh, quite a load of, of blocks. And as, as you can see, it's kind of a precarious road because it's not stacked up really as nicely as it should be, but then nobody that day expected us to get that big of a load on either. So I've also got a, a video of um, us pulling down at Westport Fair a few years ago, and we'll show you that link. Is that what it's called? Well, we'll just show you that. And so um, that was a, a, a team poll, and we took all the weight they had there, which was like 15,000 pounds, 15,500, I believe, and we crossed it no problem. And then we went to the single horse pole and Bill and Lady were up at, I think it was 9,600 pounds. And uh, Bill crossed that and he ended up second. Actually, I, I quit and I gave the first place away because I felt we'd had enough. And, uh, but Lady was on that same load, but she broke a tug. And that's why I also chose to quit. But uh, you can check that video out if you'd like. One other thing, while I was looking through some pictures this morning, I came across this picture here, and a couple videos ago I talked about my favorite horse, or it's really just one of my favorite horses, but anyways, I talked about Mac, and this is a picture of Mac with, we we're trying to decide actually who is on it. Abby doesn't think she's on this picture, but I assumed that was Abby and Trudy and Levi plus some of their cousins. So anyways, uh, he was a good horse to be able to take all these kids and give them rides. So anyways, that's going to be the end of our video. And There's I still one more question. Oh my goodness. Wow. It's about Skippy. Skippy Key, come here. Skip. Come here. Come here. He needs to be in the picture. Come here. Okay. Uh, the last video is about Skippy. Oh dear. Okay. Does Skippy sleep well at night with all that running he does? Yes, he sleeps very well. Does he sleep with you? <laughs> no, he does not. Somebody else asked, what do you do about his dirty feet? He is the, he gets, he is the dirtiest getting into everything dog, but he really is the cleanest dog I've ever had in the house and stuff. He just, I don't know what happens to all his dirt. He's a, he doesn't shed and he, he just doesn't make, he does make some dirt, but and he's, not terrible. And he's not allowed to be sitting on people's laps. <laughs> no, he not. loves, he's loves, not. loves Abby. He just loves Abby. He's not allowed to jump up on crazy over Abby. So as you can see, who spoils the dog in this family? Mm -hmm. Anyways, so one more thing I want to talk about before we finish up this video is um, I wanted to talk to Abby about some of the things that we're supposed to be getting for her, for her house. She's got a fixer upper up just up the road and she's been doing a YouTube channel on that it's called The Drill and Dream. Yes. And that's coming along really nice. So um, 
why don't you explain a couple of things even now about what we're going to be working on and getting for you as things progress. Wow. Um, soon we're going to be working on the floor. So the sheetrock is all up. It looks so nice. Um, we started from a really, really rough looking house and now it's like everything inside of it is new and fresh. Um, and so the sheetrock is up and we're almost, we're going to start painting next week, which is super exciting. But, um, so my sweet dad is doing so much lumber for me. <laughs> um, but we're going to be, well, next up we're going to be doing the window, which actually do we, I don't know what to do with that. Um, for like window trim and stuff. Okay. So that's going to be basswood. I'm thinking that's what you're going to want. Yeah. Yeah, so, but that's probably all going to have to dry and stuff too before we put it up. Yes, but it only takes a week. Okay, cool. So, that. so window trim and then we're going to be doing floors on the, some of the rooms. Um, wood floors, which would be like maple. And it's probably a lot of the maple that even recently as I was getting firewood out in some of my videos, some of those logs, some of those trees will actually have some logs in them. And so that's what we use. So we'll have to cut up into boarding and then I'll have to go into the dry kiln and dry enough so that we can plane it and probably shiplap is that what you're thinking or tongue groove one of the one of the two uh -huh. i don't know oh yeah we had talked so. about that too i don't know i don't care whatever is easier better yeah. I don't... it's easy if you just bought it somewhere else <laughs> yeah that's true but yeah so those are the main things going, going forward but eventually potentially siding oh, yeah. siding and you talked about board and batten a few of the different possibilities I talked about a clapboard more likely. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is just like a big project. So as you can see, Abby keeps me pretty busy these days. <laughs> yes. So anyways, talk about being busy. I think we all got work to do. Yes. And uh, this comes to the end of this video, but also probably comes to the end of these, these videos. I've been trying to put this whole week. I've done a video every day and that's getting a little bit overwhelming for us. And so I'm going to cut back. Um, to my two or three a week and uh, but I do hope you guys enjoyed the everyday videos um, I didn't hate them but it, it was a little overwhelming <laughs> so I'm glad that, that little stretch is over to tell you the honest truth so I hope you guys have a great day we'll see you next time Bye. Bye. by the way daddy um, I keep forgetting to tell you but I thought that was a really good idea to put the clip clopping during the end screen.